In this video we're going to look at the default setup for the iConnect Audio 4 Plus for use in a typical studio with a door. We'll be using Ableton for this example, but the same principles apply whether you're using Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, Studio One, or any other door. Check on the iConnectivity website periodically to see if connection tutorials have been added for your particular door. We're going to start off by looking at the touch panel on the front of the iConnect Audio 4 Plus to set some default settings. The first thing I'm going to do is to set the headphone level. I'll press the button for the headphones on the touch panel so that it turns red and then adjust the level with the control knob. When I'm happy with the level I'll then press it again to turn it back to green and I'll be back in monitoring mode. Next I'm going to set some input levels. I'm going to press the IN button and then select uh, channel 1, which is the microphone. Then press the button to turn it red, set some levels, and then return it to green for monitoring again. Now I'm going to repeat that for channel 2, which is where I have my guitar connected. And I'll set an appropriate level for that. And you'll notice that uh, this shows on the other meter display because I have selected uh, separate mono channels at this point for a mic and guitar. Now I'm going to do the same thing again for the stereo synthesizer and I'm going to select both uh, 3 and 4 as a stereo pair and change the levels in tandem. Lastly for a minimal setup I'm going to change the output levels for outputs 1 and 2 where I've got my studio monitors connected and set those for appropriate listening level. You can also set the outputs on 3 and 4 if you happen to have a second set of uh, stereo monitors connected for perhaps doing A-B testing or floor monitors or whatever else. However, I'm not going to use that second pair of monitors at this point, so I'm going to turn the levels back down to zero. One other thing you can do is to set all the levels at once and in this case I'm going to actually do that for all the inputs and set them to about 20 dB. That's just about after the second LED meter setting. Now we're going to play something on the synth and watch the levels and we can adjust the levels up even though we are in monitoring mode looking at the metering uh, and we don't have to be in the set mode to do that. There, that looks about right. Now you can do all of this basic configuration on the front panel, but in iConfig you'll notice that the levels follow the control knob, and you can also use the mouse independently to set the levels inside iConfig if you decide to do that. On the front panel, if you are in set mode and you change the levels in iConfig, you'll see those levels reflected as changes on the metering display as well. You can also mute and unmute playback by double pressing the control knob. Now let's look at some of the defaults in the patch bay. The analog inputs are connected by default to USB 1 and to USB 2. That means that you can record analog audio both to your iPad and to your computer door. The main outputs, channels 1 and 2 from USB 1 and 2, are sent to the analog mixer, and the mix for analog mixers channels 1 and 2 is sent to lineouts 1 and 2. USB 1, 1 and 2 are sent to USB 2, 5 and 6, and USB 2, 1 and 2 are sent to USB 1, 5 and 6, 
This means that you can record your iPad in your door and vice versa. The default mixer setup reflects these patch bay settings. Now let's take a look at the door setup to make the best use of these default patch bay and mixer settings. In live, in the preferences, I'm going to set the audio input device to be the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. I'm also going to set the output device to be the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. Now I want to set the input config to allow me to use all the channels as both mono and stereo and to do the same thing for the output config so I can use all the channels as I need to. Now you'll see I have all the channels available to record from and the same is also true of the output. Now I've set up audio and MIDI tracks here to be able to record everything coming in. A MIDI track for the micro Korg, a MIDI track for the host port connected XKey25, and a MIDI track for the iPad. A mono audio track for the microphone, another mono audio track for the guitar, a stereo audio track for the micro Korg, and another stereo audio track for the iPad. In iConfig, the factory settings for the MIDI routing are the best for this default config, and the names that are chosen here are seen in the door. So here we have the MIDI coming from the micro Korg on the DIN port, from the X key on host port 1, and from the iPad on the USB 2 port. Remember in the patch bay the four analog inputs as well as the inputs from the iPad are being sent to USB 1. So we see these reflected here in the audio connections for the microphone, the guitar, the stereo keyboard and the iPad. So now with the default routing for audio and MIDI for the iConnect Audio 4 Plus, we can send audio and MIDI from all of these locations to our door and record it. Be sure to check online for other tutorials that go into more detail on how to change the settings in the patch bay and in the mixer and in the MIDI setup.